Hello, everybody. I'm John Zadar, and today we are taking a look at EPAZ Inc., ticker EPAZ on the OTC market. Now, EPAZ is a software technological company that produces software and mobile apps that help business to basically transition from one paradigm to another into blockchain, cryptocurrency, the cloud, and now the metaverse. And we are privileged to have with us today, the vice president of communications, Michael Manahan. Hello, Michael. How are you today? Hey, John, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, we are excited to have you here. Now, I want you to start off exactly where the company did all the way back with your first initial product. I believe it was your Bitcoin wallet. I think that's for businesses and consumers. Is that right? Well, I, the company goes back even further than that. And I think it's important to understand kind of the history. Okay. Um, our, our CEO uh, and our leading technology expert, Sean Paisley, uh, who has you know degrees up the arm in uh, in software systems and, mm -hmm. and technology and coding, um, he saw an opportunity a number of years ago, uh, and th the opportunity was to take what I would call old legacy software systems that were written 20, 30, 40 years ago okay. and convert those into modern language. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, what happens is uh, you, you write a piece of software. This, if, if you did that 30 or 40 years ago, it could be written in a language that just people don't use anymore. You can't you can't automatically use that on the cloud, as an example. And there okay. were literally thousands and thousands of software programs, specialty software programs out there. Mm -hmm. And what he said is, I can take those software programs. They may not have a huge market, but there is a market for them. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. One of the very first ones that Sean worked on was a scheduling system for conference rooms. Now, a lot of companies have a conference room, mm -hmm. okay? And if they don't have a, a, a clipboard hanging outside the room for you to uh, uh, you know, schedule your meeting, what somebody did way back when was built a little software program that was designed specifically for scheduling and managing conference rooms. Okay. Well, what John did was he acquired that little software company, and he converted that language that that was written in into a cloud-based version. And now EPAS was able to market that software um, to anybody literally in the United States or around the globe, really, who right. would want to have a software program to manage their conference room. So that was kind of how we, we started. Now, is that the initial start of DeskFlex? Well, it, 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 you know, one of, I, one of the things that we have wanted to do is to convert or to develop applications that use leading edge technology for business purposes, because mm -hmm. ultimately our customers were businesses. And mm -hmm. by the way, in addition to that, small software for managing um, conference rooms. Uh, I think we we did a, another 20 or 25 different softwares for managing little pieces of businesses. But right. what happened is as technology has moved forward, as you know, we've moved into the world of things like cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and, and Bitcoin and blockchain <laughs> and all of that, they, the question is, where is that being used in business or how do we make applications where that type of thing can be used right. in business? And that really has been kind of the focus. And again, because Sean is, is um, uh, you know, again, I'm going to call him my personal opinion, but, but I know that I know the man. Uh, he, he really is a, a software genius and he sees uh, the opportunity of how we can take these leading edge kind of technology things that are happening and um, and and develop business applications around right. them. And, and mm -hmm. that's kind of the backdrop and the backstory. And now if you want, we can talk about some of the specific applications that we've been developing and working on and are using now sure. and, uh, and how those things work in the marketplace. Please, absolutely. Well, certainly you mentioned... Um, you know, uh, uh, Zenipay, uh, mm -hmm. 
Senape is a system that allows for uh, customers to pay for products using cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was really the fundamental behind Zenape. And, you know, one of the impetuses for the development of that was uh, was the cannabis industry. You know, the huh. cannabis industry, it's now become legal uh, in 35 some odd states. Right. Some, are, some are still just medical only, but some are, are recreational cannabis. But because of the unique kind of structure of the American financial system. Cannabis is legal, but um, not bankable, but not bankable. So mm -hmm. if I go into my local cannabis store and whip out my American Express and say, I want to buy 50 bucks worth of weed <laughs> up, I can't do it. Right. So the idea of Zenape was to develop a platform that would allow for people mm. to be able to pay for things like cannabis using backed up by cryptocurrency. So you're kind of bypassing the traditional um, credit card banking system. And it's right. just an example of the, the types of, of things that, um, you know, that we've developed, been developing with Zenaplay as an individual, you can have your own wallet, if you will, your wallet contains uh, cryptocurrency, and you can then use your wallet to pay for things like uh, purchasing cannabis at a cannabis store. Uh, that, that's, you know, one of our products. Now, you said in some of your news presses that it's based on Bitcoin and Ethereum, but you were planning on adding more cryptocurrencies. Do we have any more added yet? You know, I, I, I'd have to go back and look at, at the software, but, you know, clearly what our focus was to was to put in some of the more common cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. which which we did. As you know, there's many, many cryptocurrencies out there. But but we we would we wanted to include ones that people would want to own, number one, and number two, that uh that a seller who was selling a product would want to get paid with. And uh, right. you know, you might not want to get paid with some odd obscure cryptocurrency but <laughs> you know, everybody's familiar with ethereum everybody's familiar with bitcoin sure. and um and and so those were the ones that we focused on you know initially right all right and then you moved into as i said dex desk flex which i see is very versatile you've got it focused right now in telemedicine but it can really be used in a lot of applications can it yeah, Desk Flex is really, um, I call it the next stage of, of kind of what we're doing right here, which is I'm looking at a flat screen. You're looking at a flat screen. I right. can't touch you. I can't feel you. Uh, my senses are basically pretty much limited to uh, yeah. you know, what my two eyes can see. Right. Uh, you know, we've talked about things like the the metaverse and these mm -hmm. virtual reality types of things. And mm -hmm. um, really what DeskFlex is, is, is kind of uh, a new uh, a new entrant into how we enhance the virtual meeting setting where we're um, where where we could actually through that program we could assign ourselves an avatar and we could literally be in a, a virtual conference room right. where we're looking at virtual characters one is you one is me we could pass things back and forth we could look at things together we could touch each other it's just enhancing and moving forward using a combination of leading edge technology and also trying to develop business applications. Everybody knows about a lot of this stuff is being used in things like gaming. Okay. Right. Right. And, and it's, that's great for people who want to play games. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's by the way, it's a huge uh, market. People yes, who want is. to play games. But how do you take something that's being used for games and use it in a business setting? How do you use it to improve uh, the what I call the the flat screen Zoom type of of office experience, sure, and um, and that's where we're moving with with Dex Desk Flex. It's kind of developing business applications around these leading edge technologies that may not be being used 
for business purposes right now. They're being used for things, as I say, like gaming. Well, that's great. But how do we now take those and use them to enhance what businesses are doing? And that, by the way, is the focus of of uh, all of the projects we're working on at um, at EPAS. It's it's we're not developing anything for games. We're not we're not an entertainment company. We're saying how do we make business applications that use leading edge technologies and and uh, and really that is the focus of the company. And DeskFlex uh, is now moving into telemedicine, your met metaverse version of DeskFlex, I guess you'd call it. Um, yes. And and I'm going to, you know, just be perfectly honest. I'm not 100% specifically sure how that application works in detail. <laughs> um, but we have targeted certain areas that we think where uh, this program will be more applicable. And as you know, telemedicine is is really good. I, I get a kick out of this because, you know, five years ago before COVID, oh, the medical community was, oh, we, you can't do medicine over the telephone. You can't do it over the Internet. You, you've got to come into my office. And if you don't right. come into my office, well, right after COVID started, it was funny. I got an infection in my finger. I don't know how I got it gardening or something like that. The end of my finger all swole up. I called the doctor. The doctor organized a, uh, uh, you know, a telemedicine thing. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I was doing something fairly similar to what I'm doing with you. And I held my, my finger up like this. <laughs> and the doctor looked at it and she says, oh, you've got an infection. I'm going to write you a prescription for some antibiotics. And I said, this is crazy. Three, two, like two years ago, you wouldn't have done that, but now you are. Well, that's great. But, you know, this is still pretty primitive in terms of diagnosis. So how right. do we fix that? And, and that's really what we're focused on is how do we take that telemedicine experience to the next level? How do we make it even better so the doctor or the clinician can do a better job without seeing you in the office? And not only you know is, is telemedicine growing like crazy in fact yes. my, my doctor called me the other uh, day and said you need to follow up and you know you're you're due for an appointment and i says well, well when should i come into the office and she says we would prefer to do it by telemedicine so now this is the preference they don't even want you to come into the office that's because the doctor is sitting on the beach down in the bahamas i think yeah it's easy to do on the tablet to talk to your patients, isn't it? Exactly. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, one of the things that we're working on. And and again, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a massive change in the way healthcare is delivered. Probably one of the most significant changes that's happened in the last, I don't know, 40 or 50 years. Right. But it just, it's, yeah, I, there's probably going to be a lot of those doctor's offices. He, you know, the doctor, she got me on the phone. She says, well, it was it was a, some kind of a Zoom call, some kind of a platform like you're using. And she says, well, now, do you have your blood pressure machine for taking your own blood pressure? And do you have a, a machine for checking the oxygen? And like I've now have become my own doctor's office and I have all this equipment to take care of it myself. <laughs> now, along with the uh, DeskFlex three-dimensional metaverse, you guys are producing your own metaverse goggles, headset, what, whatever you want to call it. Isn't that right? Well, yeah, because to, to, to really, for this metaverse to work, you, you have to embed yourself into this virtual environment. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like, remember the movie Avatar, where the guy mm -hmm. sat down in a some kind of a machine, and then he somehow projected himself into this world right. um, it's it's kind of similar to that except you don't have to lie in a machine but you do wear mm -hmm. a special um set of goggles and the goggles interface i call them got goggles i'm going to call them glasses but yeah, they uh, the interface with the software system so that it allows you to enter the virtual environment and, and just act like you would normally act. So, you know, as an example, where I'm, I'm sitting right now, I'm looking at you. I can see what's behind you. But I, if I turn my head, I can't see what's to your left. 
right. or see what's to your right. But once you're in the virtual environment, I, you will be able to do that. I will be able to look and see because we will both be in some imaginary, if you will, room together. But because we're using these special glasses that are tied into the special software, it will it will we will perceive that we're actually sitting in a conference room together having a conversation. And when I look to look to the left, I'll see the other end of the conference room. When I look behind me, up I don't know, it might be up looking out the window over a, a lake <laughs> or a road or something. It it really will be just as if you were there, but you need these special glasses to make it. And you guys better. are planning on selling them for less than a hundred dollars, I read. Yeah, it's because it's it's you know, it's the expensive piece is the software. It, uh -huh. It's not the glasses themselves. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Now, yeah. you've also started a whole new facet to your business, Cryobo, where you're creating tokenized economies where you can actually invest in, say, real estate now. Isn't that right? Yeah, th this is, I, I think this is really just one of the most exciting things we're doing. And and part of it is because throughout my career, I have been involved in real estate and real estate syndication, both as an investor and working for companies that syndicated real estate. Now, for people who don't understand what that means, it, um, I'm a developer. I want to build an apartment building. The apartment building is going to cost me $5 million. I'm going to end up with a uh, um, I don't know, a hundred uh, units, apartment uh, rental units. Now, in order to raise that money, I will syndicate the project. I will open it up to investors. And the typically uh, typical business form we use for that is an LLC, limited liability company. Everybody's heard of LLCs and sure. I sell membership units and maybe I raising five, you know, it's the project's $5 million. Maybe I'm going to put a million in. I'm going to raise four million. I sell the units, you know, twenty five thousand dollars a piece. And uh, John, if you invest fifty thousand dollars, you get two membership units in my real estate project. Mm -hmm. But now, a year goes by. You want to sell those membership units? Who do you sell them to? <laughs> Nobody. I mean, and, and in right. some cases with those you might go back to the original syndicator he might agree to buy them from you or you might try to convince your brother-in-law to buy them right you're but, probably stuck more often than not exactly until such time as the project is finally wound down which could be right. five six or even ten years down the road but what we're able to do with cryobo is is create a token so rather than an LL, an, an L, a paper certificate in an LLC, you'll get a token. It's an electronic token mm -hmm. that then can be traded on a token exchange. So mm -hmm. you will be able to put that token up on the exchange and sell it if you need to. Right. The, the other thing is, is the token's value will be fixed to the value of the project. Mm -hmm. So as the project is developed, as it is leased up, as it produces cash flows, right. and as, it, as the asset underlying asset increases in value, so will the token increase in value. Right. So it just, um, I mean, you know, I, I hate to predict the future, but I think we will see a time when the old limited liability company and giving somebody a paper certificate that say you own a piece, you know, you're a participant in this particular real estate project. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to go by the wayside. And for people who maybe aren't in the industry, you may not realize how big this is, but there are literally hundreds of thousands of real estate projects that, wow. that get syndicated every single year in the United States. And so our, a uh, tokenization of those real estate projects will just change the way the whole syndication process is done. Now, I will want to tell you something because okay. we are highly regulated in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't necessarily coming tomorrow. It's moving forward. But we're already doing this and working on projects that are not in the United States in countries that have 
more favorable rules and regulations as to how syndications get done. And I think once we've done this successfully in some other countries, you will, you know, once it's the, the pattern is sure. there, this is how it's done. Then the yeah, I think US I read Cyprus was one of the countries you were targeting. Uh, yeah, I believe Cyprus, and I think um, uh, I think Dubai is also another one. Right, uh, United Arab Emirates. Uh, I really like the tokenization for the simple reason it allows the little guy to get into the big game. Uh, you know, the way you were talking about investing, I don't know how much the tokens are going to cost, but I got to figure it's probably a lot less than an LLC document. Well, yeah, because and then part part of it is because when you do an LLC, all of that paperwork is very expensive. You've got subscription agreements, you've got operating agreements. You can't take a a thousand dollar in investments. It's too paper intensive. It's too much work. So typically on those uh, syndications, yeah, usually a minimum investment is. Like I got a friend of mine. This is what he does for a living. He syndicates apartment buildings, and you. you Typically, he wants a twenty-five dollars or $50,000 investment because it's just too much trouble to deal with somebody sure. who only wants to put in $5,000. But with the tokenization, because the other thing is about tokens, just like Bitcoin, you can buy a part of a Bitcoin, mm -hmm. okay? You can't don't have to buy the whole Bitcoin. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, so similarly, I we anticipate that part of the uh, exchange for tokens may allow you to buy less than a full token under some and certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. But 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 also when you when you form the token, just because it's so much easier to sell the token and trade the token and create the token, you might do them for a thousand dollars as opposed to twenty five or fifty thousand dollars, which, as you say, is going to just allow more people to participate. It's all of this technology is leveling the playing field. You know, it used to be, and you're old enough to remember this, I certainly do, but all the money was made on Wall Street was made by a bunch of folks in New York, right? Right, sure, absolutely. You know, 40 years ago. I mean, I remember, for, you know, uh, even back in the 90s, I had a stockbroker, and if I, if I wanted to sell a stock or buy a stock, he charged me two or $300 to trade stock. And now I can go on to I can go on to TD Ameritrade and I can trade stock for nothing. <laughs> it's you know it really has um, leveled the playing field and made it so average people can participate in all of these investment opportunities that used to only be available for uh, a, a bunch of people who, by the way, kept the door closed intentionally so they could make all the money. In my opinion, right, right. Is there anything we didn't cover that you think our investors would want to know about your company? Well, you know, one of the other products that we've uh, we've been using um, is uh, is our uh, system that we're using to enhance yields on crops, and right, right. And, and that this is a software system that we developed, and what happens is. It's being used in the hemp growing industry in uh, right now being used in Europe. Uh, I'm not a, a biologist, but apparently to maximize crop yields, you need the right number of male plants and the right number of female plants. True. Too yeah. many males or too many females, you don't maximize crop yields. Mm -hmm. So our software system is used with a drone. The drone flies over the field. The drone is able, our software is able to identify a male plant or a female plant. Really? Yes. And then wow. the, so the software system comes back and says to the people who are managing the, um, the field, you've got, you know, too many females over here, too many males over there. You need to go in and cull the plants or move them around. And what ends up happening is you increase the yield off mm -hmm. of a plot of land. And right. by the way, we're talking significant increases in yield. We're talking perhaps getting another 30% yield out of an acre of land. Now, when you think about it, if you can increase your yield off an acre of land by 30%, you're talking a lot of additional money off of a crop. Yes, you and are. So, 
that's what the system is doing. Um, Incredible. And, and it's using a combination of drones, which is modern technology. Yes. Uh, uh, recognition, where the software is able to recognize, just kind of like facial rec recognition. Right. The software is able to recognize, oh, you look like a male plant. You look like a female plant. And it's able to put that into a report and that then the person managing that field can use to go and cull plants or add plants in order to improve pollination of the plants, which improves uh, crop yield. Do we see that technology coming over here to the U.S. and being used? Oh, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and, and I'm not going to say, again, I'm, I'm not a bi biologist. It, it, it probably is applicable to certain crops and right. not other crops because mm -hmm. different crops propagate different ways. Sure. I don't know if you could use it with wheat as an example, but you can sure. definitely use it with hemp. And of course, a relative of hemp is cannabis. Right. And so um, it could be used with cannabis, you know, as well. It's interesting. Uh, very yeah, interesting. Very interesting. And, and uh, out there, some biologists probably know, would know how to use it for, for some <laughs> other, other crops. Uh, I just don't know enough about different crops. But, you know, there's so many crops that are growing out there. Agriculture is a massive business, you know, globally. And uh, if we're going to feed people, we need to increase food production. And even if this can only have a marginal effect, you know, two, three, five, six, ten percent, that's still a huge amount of additional food uh, for not only the grower who's going to be able to sell the food, but for you and I are going to eat the stuff. Well, does that pretty much cover or is there something you'd like to add? Because I know you've got a lot going on. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I just like to, to reemphasize that, um, you know, we're not an entertainment company. We're not a gaming company. We are a company that focuses on business applications. Businesses around the globe use software. We all know that. Yeah. Software drives industry. Okay. And we're just using all of the, not all, but as many of the latest technological innovations mm -hmm. in, in the metaverse, in fintech, in cryptocurrency, in blockchain transactions, yeah. in order to develop business applications that we can then sell to businesses and, of course, make money off of those. So that's the first thing I would say that, um, you know, we are fundamentally a business software company. The second thing I would like to say is, you know, keep your eye on us because we are what I like to call an undiscovered jam. I mean, we're not being written up on the, in the Wall Street Journal. We're not being interviewed on, right. you know, on money, on, you know, on, on Fox business yet. Yeah. And that's where the opportunity arises. You know, it's people who get in early, you know, uh, in on the game. Right. They're the people, they're the people that get the rewards. And I wish I'd invested in Bitcoin 10 years ago. You know, I did are. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I encourage you to, to, to have a look at us and, you know, go to our website and, um, you know, do some research. If you have right. questions, send us questions. But we um, we are. And by the way, we also are a company that has revenues and has pos positive cash flow. So we're not like some startup that we haven't sold anything yet. We have revenues coming in the door and we have positive cash flow. So we are a real business. And of course, uh, I just you know appreciate everybody listening and thank you so much for your interest. We thank you for your time, Michael. You can get more information about EPAS at epaz.com. Again, their ticker is EPAZ on the OTC market. They are going places and now would be a good time to take a look at them. Thank you, Michael, for being here. Hopefully we can do this again and you can catch us up with progress on the company. Uh, John, I really, really appreciate you giving us the time to be on your show. And it's, I've loved my conversation with you. You're obviously a very uh, intelligent and savvy individual. And uh, thank it's, it's just thank you very much. You bet. Have a great day.